this uh, meeting of the executive committee. Um, we'll go straight into the uh, agenda. Um, minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of June. Does anybody have any observations about that? If not, then those minutes are approved. Thank you. Does anybody have any declarations of interest? Morning, Carl. Um, obviously, item four seeks to appoint you as one of the directors. It's not a paid position, therefore you don't have a disclosable pecuniary interest, but uh, you always previously, in the interest of transparency, never vote on these items uh, just to show that you're not voting on something that relates to yourself. So normally you declare it at this stage. Okay. Did you say I should declare at this stage? Uh, yeah, it's not a disclosable pecuniary interest, but in the interest of transparency, you normally say that you have an interest in it. Yeah. That's fine, thank you. So I declare that interest. Does anybody else have any other um, interests to declare? And before we started on the countdown, we did note uh, Don's um, absence because he's at Transport for the North. So can we just make sure that that's recorded? Okay, so we've done the minutes, we've done the declarations of interest. Are there any public questions? We've received no public questions or statements. Okay, thank you. Can we move on then to item four? This is the item that's about me. Um, so who's introducing uh, this? Barry, is that good to be you? Yeah, if I can introduce that. Uh, good morning, everyone. I should introduce myself previously. My name's Barry Khan. I'm the Assistant Chief Exec for Legal and Democratic Services. Um, this item asks for the executive approval to the appointment of uh, Carl, Count, Councillor Carl Les to a newly formed company called York and North Yorkshire Local Enterprise Partnership Limited. The background to this item is that the Local Enterprise Partnership, or LEP as they are known, are locally owned partnerships between local authorities and businesses that seek to drive economic growth and create jobs. A national review of the LEP's governance arrangements were undertaken in 2017. This review ultimately removed overlapping boundaries between LEPs and therefore our LEP now solely covers the geography of York and North Yorkshire. Also, as a result of this review, the government requires what it considers a strengthening of governance arrangements for LEPs. Currently, our LEP does not have a separate legal identity and the County Council acts as the accountable body. Government has recommended that LEPs by the 31st of July should have separate legal status and recommend that this can be done either through creating a separate legal company or by merging it with a existing or a newly formed combined authority. A combined authority can be created through a devolution deal and for our geography this will not happen within the government stated deadlines for the LEP review. Therefore it's been agreed with government that a light touch governance approach can be taken with our LEP. They have stated that the LEP just need to create a separate company and appoint the relevant people as directors onto this company by the 31st. The company itself will not hold any money and all the financial arrangements will continue with the County Council as the accountable body. However, the creation of the company will allow a governance structure to be in place through a company limited by guarantee to meet the government's requirements. A copy of the articles of association of the company, which acts as the company's constitution, are attached at Appendix 1 of the report and it shows that the object of the company is to provide strategic leadership to maximise the economic growth and job creation across North Yorkshire and York. So the purpose of the new company is exactly the same as the purpose of the existing LEP. It's for economic growth and job creation. The report ex itself explains that the liability of each director on the company will be limited to one pound and that the business of the LEP will continue to be transacted through the County Council. However, this will be kept under review over the coming months. And if a combined authority is created in the future for this area, then it's expected that the LEP itself will merge with the combined authority and there would not be a future need for the company. However, in the interim, it is recommended that this company is created and we appoint our representative onto the board. As Councillor Carl Lairs currently sits on the LEP board, it's recommended that he is also appointed to be a director of this newly formed company. Uh, I would also re-emphasise again that this is not a paid position, it's a voluntary position. So thank you, Chair, and I commend the appointment to the executive. Thank you, Barry. Does anybody want to uh, ask a question or make any remarks about this?
Okay, it would appear not. Um, Barry, are you going to move the recommendation? I can do, Chair. Uh, it's to appoint Councillor Carl Lairs onto the newly formed company. Okay. But it needs to, it needs to be a councillor that obviously then moves it and seconds it. I'll right. second it, Carl. Quite happy okay. to do that. So, so, so David seconded it, but we need to propose I'll, it. I'll propose it. it then, someone can second right. it. I'll okay. second it. Right. In which case. Thank you. So it would appear that that, uh, that is being approved because there's no amendments to the recommendation. So I can confirm that the executive approves the recommendations in this report. So thank you for that. Can we then move on to the next item, which is the outbreak management plan? And Carl, Carl, Carl can, I just, can I just interject? Uh, maybe I should declare an interest here. It just uh, the outbreak management plan refers to district councils licensing and licensed premises um, and as an operator of a licensed premises. I don't know if I need to declare an interest, but uh, I think it would be probably best to do so for the sake of transparency. So, Barry, if you could get that on board, I would be appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. We'll note, we'll note that interest. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. OK, so back again to the, um, the start of the outbreak management plan. And I think I'm coming to Caroline to introduce this, please. Caroline. Thank you, Carl. Uh, as part of the UK government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a national test and trace system was launched by the government on the 28th of May. This is a central part of the government's recovery strategy. All of the tier local authorities were required by the Department for Health and Social Care to develop and publish an outbreak control plan by the end of June, and this was made available on the County Council's website on the 26th of June. The North Yorkshire COVID-19 Outbreak Control Plan describes how we will work with partners to prevent, identify and manage local outbreaks of COVID-19. Although the issue is topical and there is great interest in the experience of Leicester, where the first local lockdown was implemented, outbreak management will become business as usual. It is important that our plan is sustainable over the next 24 months when we may need to respond to outbreaks of various size and complexity in different settings across the county. Effective outbreak management requires a range of skills and capacity that can only be provided through partnership and our plans detail the roles and responsibilities of the key partners we work with to manage outbreaks. Engagement with the public is also important. We want to keep the public informed without alarming them. We need to build and keep their trust without giving false reassurance. This is why the plan details our communication strategy to keep our public informed and engaged. The best way to manage an outbreak is to prevent it. In the past six months, our knowledge of how to prevent COVID-19 infection has increased. The mainstay of prevention remains social distancing and hand hygiene. When two metres social distancing is not possible, we need to keep at least one metre apart with additional protective me measures such as face coverings. Now, the recommendations are that one, the contents of the report be noted and the North Yorkshire County Council COVID-19 outbreak control plan endorsed. Two, the making of any required changes to the plan in order to respond to changes in national policy or local circumstances be delegated to the Director of Public Health in consultation with the Leader of the Council as Chair of the Outbreak Management Advisory Board. And three, the budgetary decisions associated with delivery of the plan and all further steps in it to implement the plan be delegated to the Corporate Director, Health and Adult Services. Um, now, I would like to ask Dr Lincoln Sargent, Director of Public Health, to add any further comments. Thank you, Councillor Dickinson. Um, executive members will um, probably have received a short uh, presentation with some slides from me this morning, just for you to refer to in terms of the latest numbers um, in North Yorkshire as where we are now in dealing with the outbreaks. Um, so we are averaging in North Yorkshire probably one to two new cases per day, certainly over the last week or so. 
um, our position vis-a-vis -vis similar um, council areas is that we're about middle of the pack, so we, we are um, outliers from that point of view. Uh, many people will have been listening to the news on um, the issue about um, the issue with Leicester, for example, and just to point out that we are very much um, off the, we're not in that ranking. Um, Scarborough, which has the highest rates to date, is um, about half, less than half of the levels that we're seeing in uh, Leicester at the, at the moment. So my camera should be on, I'm not sure why, anyway. Good, that's better. And uh, finally, in terms of hospitalizations, uh, they continue to go down very steadily but slowly. Um, uh, ICU beds, typically ones and twos, um, but um, certainly much lower than the kind of levels that we saw earlier. So the bottom line is that most of the data are indicating we are in a situation where the numbers are low and that gives us a good opportunity to consolidate um, that situation to work effectively with uh, test and trace to keep those numbers low. Um, our approach in uh, implementing the plan is to identify those areas, those settings, those groups of people that are at higher risk um, of contracting the virus or if they contract the virus of um, developing severe illness and proactively working um, to prevent um, infection in the first place. Where infection does take place, we want to identify those situations early and we want to uh, manage through improving or increasing access to testing, um, ensuring that we're working with those settings to put the uh, proper control measures in place so that we gain control of situations and don't allow onward spread. And we have been doing that effectively. Um, we've been working uh, in terms of incidents. We've had a few in food processing plants um, and some of that learning we've we, we've been using as we um, as we go forward. Um, the other point is uh, around schools. Um, we've had lots of queries. It's mainly single cases. A lot of them are parents, a few teachers. Um, the aspects they're usually suspending a bubble um, for a period, but generally. Uh, we've been on top of things. I'll pause there. Thank you, uh, Lincoln. Can I uh, turn to my executive colleagues now, please, and ask if anybody wants to ask um, a question or make a comment? Um, I'll run down through the, uh, the, the script that I have of, of the names, so we just make sure that we don't miss anybody. Um, and I wonder if when you do ask a question, um, perhaps you just introduce yourself and your role um, at that time. Um, okay, so Patrick first. Sorry, Carol, did you want me to introduce myself or to ask a question? If, if, you, if you want to ask a question, Patrick, would you then introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Patrick Mulligan. I'm the exec member for education and skills, and my division is Airedale. Uh, I would just comment on the um, some of the concerns about schools, um, Lincoln, and the logistics of actually going back to school and how we'll have social distancing and how that might work on school transport. And there's some very complex issues that I think need to be determined by um, September. And also, if there was an outbreak in schools, I know this has happened in some other countries in uh, China, Australia, would we go immediately go to lockdown of all schools or just schools where there are cases, or what is the plan for that? Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Lincoln, please. Yeah, um, so I think um, I'll, I'll probably attempt the latter one first. Generally speaking, we try to have a proportionate response. So. 
if the situation is affecting a single school, then we will deal with that school uh, on its own merits. And there will be situations where you might be able to deal with a particular bubble, whether it is a year group or um, situations like that. But you'd have to judge it on what you're seeing in that school to determine whether you want to have a whole school closure or not. There may be situations, and, and that um, brings up the, the first question, which is about transport. One of the things we're picking up, particularly in the uh, factory outbreaks that we've had, is that it seems that it is how people travel to work, um, car sharing, those kinds of situations that, that was a key factor in, in, in some of those. So in a situation where it might be that it's a transportation route, for example, or there is something where school populations are mixing, you may have a situation where we may um, choose to close a number of schools because we think transmission is um, in that nexus. But I, I would say you can't prejudge until you're actually dealing with the situation and, and you do what is what is right in that situation. Thank you, Lincoln. Um, Janet, you're next on my list. Uh, thank you, Leader. Janet Sanderson, Executive Member for Children's Services. Yes, my questions were similar to um, to Patrick's, really. It was about the class bubble. So I understand that the class bubble would close if there was an infection, but that child could still be on the bus and the bus might not be bubbled. I think you've partly answered it, but it was just for clarification there. Thanks, Lincoln. Thank you, Janet. Lincoln, please. Yes, and I think that that would be the situation. We would certainly need to risk assess um, all those aspects. Um, we then, the interesting thing with schools, um, children per se uh, do not appear to be as important um, as the kind of sources of spread. It is probably um, the adults that are part of the whole school environment, whether it is teachers, whether it's parents um, picking up children, etc. Um, but again, school transport, all of those kinds of issues, you'd have to look at the whole uh, mix of factors and determine what measures are going to have the, the, the biggest effect in controlling the situation. Thank you, Lincoln. David, David Chance, you're next. Thank you, Leader. David Chance, um, portfolio holder for uh, Stronger Communities. I, I had two questions, but I think I've been beaten to it. One was on the bubble on, on school transport. Uh, and uh, the other one, uh, I just I note on the on the paperwork that you, you gave us, Lincoln, that you said you, there have been 36 new cases reported in the past two weeks. How many of those 36 were actually within a bubble or were they all separate cases? Uh, so generally, uh, most uh, cases have been single. Uh, we are monitoring uh, care homes, so we know uh, some of those have been part of our testing in care homes. What we typically do is if someone is symptomatic in a care home, we, we test. Um, if we come back with um, positives, we then uh, do more widespread testing in, in that setting. So that will sometimes pick up two or three additional um, cases. Um, in the last weeks, uh, we've, we've dealt with the factory before that, but there have been situations like in a factory where you may get a, a localized spike in cases. Again, in schools, you may get a clustering of, of a few. So what we try to do is to understand as much as possible about those cases. Are they single household um, cases or are they part of a different setting? And then we try to understand uh, if there is anyone else affected in that particular setting. Hope that um, answers. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Lincoln. Uh, Greg, you're next. I have no questions, Gareth. Right. Uh, Thank you, Caroline. Greg. Thank you. <laughs> and Caroline, um, I, I don't suppose you've got any questions as it's your report, but <laughs> Not, not at this time, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Michael? Thank you, Leader. Councillor Michael Harrison. I'm the Executive Member for Adult Services.
and health integration. I'm familiar with the report in, uh, through my portfolio. I've got, got no questions of Lincoln. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Michael. Um, Don McKenzie would be next, but uh, we've already re recorded his apologies for being elsewhere. Andrew, Andrew Lee. Hello, uh, Leader. Yes, Andrew Lee, uh, County Councillor for Kaywood and Saxton and Cabinet Member for Open Business. Uh, no questions from me, Leader. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Andrew. And finally, uh, Gareth. Um, hopefully, Gareth, you're uh, still with us, not uh, dobbing in and out because of the technology. Gareth, please. He's struggling, Cal. Yeah. That's 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 a shame. But, um, okay. Um, so thank you for uh, the answers to the questions, Lincoln. It has been moved. It, is it going to be seconded by somebody? Happy to second, uh, Leader. Thank you, uh, Michael. Um, does anybody have any reason to vote against the recommendations which Caroline read out? No. So in that case, um, I'm declaring that the executive approves the recommendations in the report. So thank you for that. Um, item six, appointments to committees and other bodies. Um, I think I'm coming to you, Barry, for this article, am I? Yeah, happy to speak to it, Chair. It's just for uh, appointing for three different bodies. Uh, the report just simply requests approval to appoint Councillor Michael Harrison onto the Humber Coast and Vale Health and Care Partnership. Uh, it's asking to appoint Councillor Patrick Mulligan onto the West Yorkshire Harrogate and Health and Care Partnership. So those two appointments are to do with just the recent reorganisation of the partnership uh, side of it to make sure that the county council are still represented. And finally, it's just to note that the City of York County Councillor, Christian Varsi, is going to be the City of York's representative to the North Yorkshire Pension Fund Committee. So it's asking you to approve all of those appointments, Chair. Thank you, Barry. Um, I'm happy to propose them from the Chair. I'm sure somebody will second them, but does anybody have happy any to second. questions? Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments to make on any of those three recommendations? No, in that case, I can confirm that the executive have approved those recommendations. The forward plan, anybody got any observations on the forward plan? If not, then we note it and move on. And any other business, I have uh, no um, urgent business notified to me. So with that, I, I thank you all for your attendance, including the people who are um, watching us from afar. Um, and I declare the meeting closed and just wish you uh, to keep safe until the next time. Thank you.